Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel, you already know what time it is, it's time for another video, big up your damn cells in the building, make sure you smash up the likes every single damn time and subscribe if you are new, we had to make a couple tweaks, a little tinker to the intro, very intelligent people in the comments, they were like, yo, you can't subscribe every damn time, if you do, you have to resubscribe because you had to unsubscribe and that is not what we want, that is very much a waste of everyone's time, so we made a couple of tweaks, little tinker, makes more sense now. Today's video is about techie technical wingers, right? Please understand, we've had a few. Your Damien Duffs, Zola's technical players, Hazard, who recently retired. We will be speaking on All You Can Eat Chelsea very soon. Actually, tomorrow morning on a Sunday. You know, Joe Coles. We've had a few. We've had many. But now, it's time to talk about the future. The next 15, 20 years, wrapped up, secured, safe, on lock. The rivals are not ready. These two players, they need to have their stocks, I mean, just invest in them. Because even in pre-season, one of them we got to see a glimpse of that I'm going to mention. When Sia wrote diamonds for Rihanna, they were, she was thinking about these two players. I'm telling you, she was thinking about these two players. The first one we're starting with is Angelo. We're having a little catch up on Angelo. Angelo, 18 years old, at Strasbourg on loan. We saw him in pre-season. I was gassed. I was high as a kite. I was singing from the high heavens. This guy... I want to keep him. I want him to stay. Now, thankfully, he's playing. But why was I so swept up? Why was I so gassed? It's because he's playing like a player in his mid-20s at 18. At 18. But where does that come from? It comes from the fact that in Brazil, joining the under-15 setup at 10. In Brazil, joining the under-20 setup at 15. This guy has been playing above his years for many a year. And that's why he plays with such intelligence. That's why his playing style gravitated to me, to him in the first place. Making his Santos debut two days after his 16th birthday. That's why I want to give this guy his flowers and his gas and tell you how much I believe in him even more since his Strasbourg loan has started so well because it's very similar to the second name on this list in terms of this start. Two days after his 16th birthday, he made his debut for Santos. That broke the record surpassing Rodrigo at Real Madrid. You know Rodrigo at Real Madrid? This guy broke that record. He's played 67 Serie A top flight games in Brazil, right? From the 1920 season where he made his debut onwards to now. 67, that's basically two full seasons almost. This guy is showing in pre-season why I was gassed, but then going to Strasbourg, first loan in Europe in a new country, new way of life, 18 years old, and he's going in there and he's winning Young Player of the Month for League on, that's Eden Hazard's award, yeah? Young player of the month in League on. He's winning player of the month for his club, Strasbourg. His first month playing consistent games, really playing at all, really, because when he started, he didn't stop. He didn't come out the team for Vieira. We're going to talk about it in a minute. He's winning, young, he's winning player of the month for Strasbourg as well. One assist, seven games. The, the statistics don't sound like as if I should be giving him, you know, this kind of glowing review, but I'm going to get down and break it up in a minute. Obviously, Vieira at the start of the season, I was worried he wasn't playing. Started with 3-5-2, started with 3-4-3, first four games, didn't really see him. Two wins, two losses. But then, next four games, he switched to that formation of a 4-2-3-1. He's playing on that right wing, just as he was for Chelsea in preseason. Hugging that touchline, playing those one-twos infield. Intelligent, playmaker, creating opportunities. And this is why the one assist in seven doesn't bother me, doesn't concern me. Haven't even flinched. Because when you look at his underlying statistics... This guy is doing what he needs to do and he is doing what he should be doing to win these awards that we're talking about and that's why he's getting them. And that's why you've got to watch the game, not just go off GA. I say it all the time, you've got to watch the game, not go off GA because these statistics, these stats are the ones that actually matter. And if he keeps these going throughout the season, this is what we want to hear. Second for chances created at Strasbourg, tick. Joint first for expected assists at Strasbourg, tick. That means he's creating chances. He's putting the ball on a plate for others, as we know he can do. Very intelligent, like I said, comes for those one-twos, links up the play very well, will cross the ball to a very good standard. So he's doing that. They're just not taking their chances. But that's none of our business. We don't care. When he comes back, that's none of our concern. Hopefully, ironically, we would hope our forwards would be better at putting the ball in the back of the net than Strasbourg. Obviously, this is why we wanted Wahi to join us so we could loan him to Strasbourg. He showed against Arsenal for Lons. His finishing isn't too bad. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it done. Neither could we loan Washington. So 
Maybe the finishing could have been improved if we had had a couple more players to shove out there. We couldn't get it done. Successful dribbles. He's leading comfortably in this team. Per 90, successful dribbles, 2.6 per 90. The next person in this team, Strasbourg, is 1.6. Shattering them. Shattering them on this. Fantastic again, right? This is what we want to see. And in terms of Pochettino, we know he wants a high press. We know he wants energy. Where is he for possession one in the final third? He's sitting in third. He works hard. So not only am I drawn to the dribbling, not only am I drawn to the one-twos, not, not only am I drawn to the fantastic, intelligent, high IQ play, but I'm drawn to the high, high, high intensity off the ball, defensive work rate, which we need. And this is why there's so much competition on this flank. We've seen Palmer. His work rate has been incredible since he's come to Chelsea. Not only has he changed us on the ball, off the ball, he's been winning the ball, intercepting and winning it back, getting us back on the attack. Madaweke, we know, listen, you've got a lot of competition for your place. He was fantastic at taking people on last season. Successful dribbles. He absolutely clears it. We've seen quotes, you know, that he's looking at improving that final third play, talking to the likes of Ashley Coles and whatnot. You know, he's looking to improve their, that finishing, their assists. So much competition. But that play style from Angelo, this is what we love to see. So that's the first mention. Angelo, keep cooking at Strasbourg. We believe in you. You are one of the players that people are sleeping on outside of Chelsea. It's not a problem. We know what's coming. This guy's been playing football. I have to say it again. He's been playing football at the top level in Brazil for years. For years. He's 18, but he plays like he's 20. 21, 22. Um... Probably I'm even being disrespectful by saying 21, probably older. The next name on this list is the guy that when we signed, everybody's jaws dropped because you see a couple comps and thankfully I've been able to see some extended highlights because his games are always on at crazy times. Kendry Paris, the youngest debutant and goal scorer in the Ecuadorian top flight. Yeah, the youngest debutant for Ecuador, just period, for the national team, 16. They are throwing this guy in as soon as they can. They would like to throw him in at 14, 15. Like, they, like I just said with Angelo, these are the similarities, right? But they can't, so they have to wait. The, na the national team of Ecuador had to wait to f until this guy was legally allowed to play. Making his debut against Uruguay in a 2-1 win. Game-winning assist, yeah? Youngest player to represent Ecuador, like I said. Second youngest South American behind Maradona to represent in international football in South America. Ridiculous. Again, he's 16. He's still 16. He turned 17 in December. He's 16 right now, playing for Ecuador, playing next to Caicedo, bopping the ball with Caicedo, one twos in qualifiers. 16. Do, I, do we understand what, do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> 16. And then a couple of days ago, scored a, a winner against Bolivia becoming the youngest ever goal scorer in South American qualifiers. Again, youngest ever, period, 16. 16. He's getting a couple of comparisons to Messi. Thankfully, good head, young shoulders. He's shutting it down. He says, listen, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I am, I am Padres. This is my name. I am giving my name to Ecuador. I don't want to be compared. And I, I like it because I don't like comparisons too much, to be honest, when it comes to our players and being compared to other players. I remember Pulisic in lockdown, right? Everyone's like, oh, he's the next Hazard. I was trying to shut that down for months. He's not the next Hazard. He's Pulisic. Let him be Pulisic. Now, unfortunately, it didn't turn out very well from his Chelsea career. Hopefully, he kicks on in Milan. He started very well. But I don't want those comparisons. I'm glad he's shutting it down already. There's so many next Messis. There's been so many next Ronaldos. Most of them end up becoming nothing. Good head, young shoulders. 16 years old, playing for his country, getting game-winning assists, getting a goal against Bolivia. And assist against Uruguay. Uruguay are no mugs. This is Uruguay. Uruguay of formerly known Cavani, formerly Suarez, formerly all these players. Uruguay. Nunes, Uruguay. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? And again, it's not just the stats and coming through at young ages, which we're seeing for both these players, the similarities. It's the fact that their play styles are just so diverse. The attributes that Padres has shown in his game. This guy can dribble. His close control is ridiculous. His long range passing I'm seeing, these switches of play, ridiculous, right? He's, he's got speed, so you're not, you're not limited. And this is what I've always spoken about and kind of cussed out on this channel so many times in previous Chelsea attacks, limited players that can't dribble, whether it be a Timo Werner, that doesn't have pace, maybe a Hakim Ziyech. Limited attackers that can only offer maybe one or two attributes to a high level, the rest of them are pretty, pretty low. 
and that limits their game. That means they can only play a certain way. That means they're even more tailor, they have to be system players because they can't do a variety of things. You have to play a certain way, you have to give them the ball in a certain way, whether it's running in behind, whether it's ball to feet. If they have too many players around them, they can't think of a solution because they can't dribble. They don't have the speed to get past players. They, we don't want that. Yes, we want to have a system that's super, super, you know, superior to everybody else's system, 100%. But then you need individual brilliance. Then you need individual quality. And when you have versatility, when you have players that have many attributes that can dribble, that can pass, that, that are press resistant, that can shoot, this allows you, they become the system. They are so good that they are the system. They are the players that build the system. And if you have multiple players like that, well, then you're absolutely dreaming, right? So... He's shutting down the Messi comparisons, and rightfully so, because there's a long way to go. But these two players, and it reminds me very much of Endrick as well, you know, who's joining Real Madrid. Another player that Chelsea were in South America over the summer trying to get. Now, we knew we were never going to get Endrick, right? We were never going to get Endrick, but we tried. <laughs> you remember those reports, those links? I didn't really talk about it on this channel too much because I knew we wasn't getting them. When Real Madrid come in for a young South American, it's pretty much game over. But... The fact that we were interested in Endrick as well just goes to show that Chelsea scouts right now, when they go to South America, they leave with something. They know their wonderful foods and they are they are very, very much doing their due diligence and they're getting these young players that are performing way above their years on a consistent, constant basis. And this is why, hopefully, Andre Santos at Nottingham Forest will get his game time because there's another player in preseason I was incredibly impressed with and really hope that he will hopefully break in and then show everybody his quality, which I think is undeniable as well. Fantastic work. These two young players, I wanted to give them some flowers. I wanted to put some light, shed some light on them. Very, very, very high potential prospects that we have here. Game changers potentially in the coming years. Padres joins in 2025. Angelo's already here, out on loan. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Because these two players here, you don't need to worry about that right inside for the rest of your lives. <laughs> it's simple as that. It's as simple as that. Madaweke, get to work. You've done well in international. Get to work. You've got two young guns coming for you. Palmer, keep doing what you're doing. Sterling, you better shift over to that left-hand side and stay there. But by the time he gets to his you know, older years anyway, these two will be coming through. I'm so excited. This is something to be excited for. Right now, we must take care of business. We have tough fixtures to come. Check out that video if you haven't already. But these are the type of players that guarantee that we are to see some samba sexy football in the future it's, it's just a guarantee right i know they're not brazilian well Padres isn't angelo is but you get my drift big up your damn selves make sure you subscribe make sure you subscribe make sure you smash up the likes listen i'm buzzing these two players needed their flowers these two players are going to be top ballers and i hope i hope that we understand that when the time comes to integrate them into our team and not anybody else's do not sell these players it will break my heart, literally. I know I haven't even seen them for 10 odd games. So yeah, guys, I'll see you guys next time. In a bit, people. Peace.